Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining um, us today. As we begin this webinar, I'd like to introduce you to some of the acronyms and terms used throughout this presentation. SSID number is the state student identification number that is assigned to a student when they first enroll in the state of Maine at one of our schools. Synergy is Maine State Student Enrollment System. NEO is Maine's data system used for data collection and reporting. MARS is Maine's Accountability and Assessment Reporting System. MSAA is the multi-state alternate assessment used for ELA and mathematics. PAPE is the personalized alternate assessment portfolio used to assess science. The goals for today are to confirm student identification through the student reports module in NEO, know how NEO connects with Synergy, know how to flag or unflag students as alternate assessment participants, use MARS to retrieve student alternate assessment performance data. Let's begin with the definition of significant cognitive disability. A student with significant cognitive disability is a student <clears throat> who has been identified with one or more of the existing categories of disability under the IDEA and displays an intellectual functioning much below the average student that exists parallel to significant deficits in adaptive behavior. Students with a significant cognitive disability require extensive instruction with goals and objectives written at less depth and breadth and connected to the main learning results. As we all know, ESSA places a 1% cap on the number of students that are assessed statewide with alternate assessments. Only students in grades three through eight and the third year of high school are eligible for statewide testing. Where are we? Well, congratulations, folks, you did it. Beginning in 2014 and 15, Maine has reduced the number of students participating in alternate assessment by one-tenth of a percent. Maine currently is at 0.98% participation. We are just barely under the 1%, and my fingers are crossed that we're gonna remain there as we look through our data. So our job now is to continue to use participation guidelines and keep our participation below the 1%. Yay. <laughs> the schedule I'm presenting today is very similar to the one we used last year. This year, all districts above the 1% threshold received a notice of percentage of students that participated in the spring 2019 assessment. With this information, was data for the past two years so that districts may see trends in participation. Today's webinar will assist you in examining the alternate assessment report in NEO. Districts may currently look at the guideline criteria for students anticipated to take the alternate assessments this year. IEP amendments are one route to consider. Districts are asked to update Synergy by September 27th, so that the department may recalculate percentages the week of September 30th. Having said this, we also realize that many districts have not completed student enrollment in Synergy, so the department will try to recalculate percentages the latter part of that week. Memos are scheduled to go out to districts that remain above the 1%. We will hold a webinar to assist um, districts with completing action plans on October 16th at three o'clock. A link will be provided to log in. The department will post a waiver request to the United States Department of Education and open it for public comment should our numbers change and a waiver is necessary. All requested action plans will be due no later than November 1st. Lastly, Maine will submit our waiver request if applicable. A first easy review of your students participating in alternate assessments is to go into NEO to find your student report 
for your alternate assessments. Start with the NEO login. Then choose data and then student reports. From the student data reports dashboard, choose alternate assessment. View report. You can then view this report by school or by district. If the list of students is inaccurate, please go into Synergy to flag students as alternate test takers or unflag ones that are no longer applicable. If you have students in a non-testing grade identified, this is fine. Only the students in the testing grades, three through eight and third year high school are used in the department's calculations. First, log into Synergy at https colon slash slash me dash doe dot edu point dot com slash capital L for login dot aspx. At the home page, you may either type in special services in the quick search box at the top of the page, or you can use the drop-down on the tree pod symbol on the left. At the drop-down, you will choose student programs and then special ed student services. Use the student's SSID number to look up his or her enrollment information. Then look at the bottom right-hand side of the student services page to find alternate assessment. Here is where you may either flag or unflag a student to participate in alternate assessments. Main DOE has a new homepage. To log into the confidential portal of Main Accountability and Assessment Reporting System, or MARS, go to the department's home, Department of Education page. The assessment link is found in the first box on the left. A click here will bring you to the main comprehensive assessment system page. From here, click on the test results box. The MARS reporting is the second accordion button option. The URL provided will take you directly to the test results page. This is a screenshot from the test results page describing MARS as providing confidential access to detailed information about how students performed on state assessments. MARS includes data for WIDA Access, the English Proficiency Assessment for English Learners. Access to this site is controlled by district assessment coordinators. Beginning this year, 2019, MARS provides confidential student, district, and school information only. Click the Confidential Site button in the middle of the page to go to MARS. The vendor for MARS Confidential Site is Focal Point. The Focal Point K-12 button is found on the middle of this web page. This will take you directly to the sign-in page. Remember, if you do not have confidentials for the MARS site, contact your district assessment coordinator. You may also go directly to the login site through the URL https colon slash slash lms dot backpack dot education slash. Once you are in MARS, there are three options at the bottom of the page. This screenshot shows how to access different information. The district and schools report link found on the lower left portion of the page will provide district participation percentiles. Here you will see the number of students that participated in each assessment, the percentage of students in alternate assessments and an overall participation rate. In this example, one student scored in the above state expectations level. A further look at the interactive reports will provide the performance scores for students in your district. 
Should this student have taken the alternate assessment? Well, let's take a closer look. So back on the MARS homepage, click on the Interactive Reports button found on the bottom right hand side. Performance reports are then available. You will need to choose your district and test name. For this one screenshot only, Acadia Academy appears as it's the first option on the drop down. I have also chosen MSAA as the test name. So this is a different example. District information for both ELA and math assessments will appear broken down by performance levels. Here you can locate individual students that are achieving in the above state expectations level four. Level four is a light blue bar and is an active bar when you click on it. Mars will first list the schools, as shown on the top of the screen. This example is another fake district called Lenox Public Schools. This district has three schools with students that achieved in the above state expectations performance level. Click on any school to find the list of students that performed at this level. The first two students shown have a score of 1290 and 1286. 1290 is the top score that can be achieved for grade eight in the above state expectations level and should be looked at. Here is a comprehensive view of the student that scored 1286 in ELA. The other two content areas, math and science, are much lower. Each content has their own achievement levels. Be sure to click on the Expand to View Achievement Levels link to find grade level ranges. The range for a student to achieve in the above state expectation score range in sixth grade is 1251 to 1290. The student we were previously looking at scored at a 1286 in ELA, but only a 1246 in math. This is very close to the top, but remember, the student did not score in the above state expectations in math and science. You may want to review this student's file. Please review Maine's guidance and the guidelines for identifying the students with significant cognitive disabilities. Review the criteria annually to make your determination to the best route for each student. And lastly, identify which students will be administered the alternate assessments in the Special Ed Student Services page in NEO. Please remember parents must be clearly informed and understand that their child's academic achievement will be measured based on alternate standards and inform them on how participation in alternate assessments may delay or affect the student from completing the requirements for a regular high school diploma. This slide looks at part of the participation guidance on page five of the document. This guidance is a good reference when you are considering determinations for students to participate in alternate assessments. The IEP team is to consider um, a description of the student's curriculum and instruction, including data on progress, classroom samples and data, examples of performance on assessment tasks to compare with classroom work, results of district-wide alternate assessments, results of individualized reading assessments, and IEP information including present levels of academic achievement and functional performance, goals and short-term objectives, considerations for students with individualized and substantial communication needs or modes, considerations for students who may be learning English as a second or other language that may interfere with accurate assessment of his or her academic, social, or adaptive abilities. Empower Me and Maine SAT 
offer many supports, tools, and accommodations for students. Can any of your students access the assessment using any or all of these tools, supports, or accommodations? Could your students indeed participate in the general assessment giving these supports? You may find a full list on the general assessment website, and this is given below, https colon slash slash www.maine.gov slash DOE testing, and then a, a lower dash accountability slash MECAF slash and supports.